I started out today with the intent to do a vlog about the fountains at the 9-11 memorial. But then it dawned on me that I could actually retrace my own steps of the morning of 9-11 as I was living in Tribeca at the time. So I figure I'll do that and then I'll also do the other vlog separately. So in 2001, I was living in this room right here, B17. Uh, I was using it as an art studio basically. And uh, I went out jogging in the morning at, I don't know what time, maybe nine. I don't remember what time 9-11 started. So I was living in these studios. It still says Magna Fabrics up there. That morning, I went out running and uh, we'll go to the next place that I remember. So I remember that morning, I think it was on this street right here, Leonard and Broadway. Um, a guy interviewed me on video, on camera, about my reaction to 9-11. And um, I've always wanted to find that footage, but um, I've never been able to find it. So if anybody ever finds it, please let me know. I ran up Broadway, uh, I, was, I had my tennis shoes on, so I was running around, and people were streaming down. They were flooding down from, from up there. I asked him what was going on and there was just basically general panic and some woman did tell me that uh, something to the fact that a plane had hit the World Trade Center. That's all I really remember. I kept running up Broadway against the tide of people fleeing the scene. The next thing I remember I was at this intersection and um, people were running crazy. Uh, they were, I don't think that they had it uh, blocked off yet, um, but they were all running like away from the World Trade Center, which was right there. You could see it right there. I think it was the North Tower you could see. So what I did was uh, I ran back down to, par to Park Place, which is right down here. So I ran back down to Park Place, and then I ran down Park Place past that building right there. And you can see that it's messed up now it's like it looks like it's abandoned on the top floor it used to be shiny and silver but now I don't know why they haven't fixed it it's been 16 years or 15 years rather so I ran down here to this intersection of church and park place and there was a small jet engine on the ground right there and it had looked like it had crashed off of that building up there where those windows are missing and it wasn't the size of a jet engine off of a normal aircraft like a like a commercial aircraft, one of those huge jet engines. It was about the size of like a small barrel and it was kind of smashed up a bit. And I've looked for images online of it, but I, don't, I haven't found anything yet. So if anybody knows about that, let me know, please. So I continued on down to here, uh, which is Park Place and Greenwich Street. Uh, and I think building seven was right there. I'm not sure. No, it was over there, another block down. At that point, I must have run down around here. This is Barkley in Washington. But anyways, I ended up down there on West End Highway. So we'll go there next. So I stood here at this exact spot and watched as the North Tower smoked like a candle burning. Um, the smoke blew off ladder, equilaterally on either side of the North Tower going back. It was absolutely surreal. I stood here for about, I don't know how long. Um, it could have been 10 minutes or something, I don't know. And then the, the South Tower collapsed in this huge cloud of dust. And I guess it was smoke, but it was like dust, like cement dust, um, just started coming up all over the place. And there was this loud noise over there, but it was, it was, it was loud, but it was, I don't know, it wasn't like a, it sounded like mi minor explosions, I would say. Um, and then that bridge down there that you can see behind me, I remember it getting like covered in the smoke or the dust or whatever. And then the cloud of dust and smoke started coming up slowly up to here. And uh, I remember maybe there was a van over here or like a, a ambulance or something. And uh, it got covered or something in the dust. But anyways, um, we slowly, like anybody who's around here, kind of slowly, like we started running up this street uh, oh, to get away from the cloud, right? So I was, I was running up probably on this side right here uh, to get away from the cloud. And I kept on running up until where the Hudson sort of comes in closer to West Side Highway. Um, 
it was a really, really awful experience. So uh, everybody uh, ran or walked slowly up here and there was a huge cloud of smoke just or whatever it was just coming up wafting up slowly just growing sort of all the way up here and then the next thing that I remember was uh, so here I am uh, right where the Hudson sort of comes up to uh, West Side Highway and the next thing I remember was um, about I don't know maybe eight uh, firefighters walking up over there behind me and they were carrying I think they were carrying a ladder maybe or something but they were carrying something and they just had this look on their eyes that I associate to this day with a look of death in their eyes and I know that sounds over dramatic but that's the impression it gave me then and that hasn't changed since so the cloud of smoke um, I, I don't know if it abated or if it stopped here but I decided to continue on so I I walked up this way and I'll take you there next I think I turned down this street right here which I don't know what it's called but I'm pretty sure this is where I uh, ran up back into sort into town sort of I don't know if it was this exact street but I remember walking up one of these side streets away from the river and there was a guy in his 60s and he had a suit on and he had he told me that he had been on the hundredth floor I remember that and that he had come down uh, and escaped from the World Trade Center and it was really weird because there was this serious this palpable feeling of like your heart in your stomach your heart was like dropped and everybody felt like that there were there were people crying there were women crying but for the most part there was just this weird feeling of something really devastatingly wrong okay so I think that was the right street um, because I remember being on this corner right here and there was a, a guy right here I thought it was in front of a florist so it might not be exactly here but Anyways, there was a guy, an Irish guy, and um, I was talking to him about it, and I could see the World Trade Center right there. It was right there, I guess both buildings, um, but I remember like part of it falling down actually. And then the Irish guy said that um, he, he saw people jumping off, and I remember not wanting to see that. And I've seen video footage a few of times of it um, since then, but I don't really like watching it because that's just too, too awful. But um, I remember standing here and I remember watching the, the, I guess it was the North Tower falling by that time. And there was uh, the smoke, the, the cloud of dust or whatever it was, was definitely coming down this way by then. Not to this point, but you could totally see it all over that area. So that's the last thing that I remember from being outside that day, you know, during the actual f falling. Uh, at least that morning. In fact, I'll show you later what I did after in the evening roughly in late afternoon. But roughly what I did was I went back to my office and uh, Armando was uh, in the office next door and he had arrived. I guess he'd gotten like one of the last trains from New Jersey or something over. And uh, he ended up getting stuck in New York for I think like three days. And we were both stuck in our offices for three days and it was really uncanny because I was working at a um, macrobiotic uh, re Japanese restaurant called Suin in Soho at that time and I brought home three um, sort of set meals of, uh, of tofu pad thai or whatever um, and I'd had stored them in my little refrigerator and I never did that it was absolutely uncanny that it that it should happen like that I remember maybe a few days or maybe a week or two after 9-11 um, after George Bush had gone and like surveyed uh, the uh, the ruins um, there was like a sort of parade not a parade but just like um, a bunch of people walking down the street they had Giuliani walking down the street and also uh, Hillary Clinton and they were uh, walking and there was a lot of crowds and I remember that the um, ruins of building 7 were right there and uh, I don't know if they were still smoking but there was definitely still tons of smoke coming up maybe behind them or and from them and they just looked like this giant rubble heap so uh, later that afternoon I'm not sure exactly at what time but I put on my rollerblades that I used to use to skate up and down the Hudson uh, walk path or whatever I put them on and uh, I came down the Hudson down through Wagner Park I think it's called uh, Battery Park or whatever and I I remember 
coming out of this street behind me, right? And then I remember there were some cops here. I remember that atrium right there was smashed in from the top. It was like something had crashed down through it. And I remember there were a couple cops here. And at that point, it wasn't really like, I mean, like our world now in post 9-11 where everything's just like hyper security. The cops were still kind of nice. The last thing I remember from the day of 9-11 was being around this area right here and it was completely covered in ash. Um, I don't know how many inches up, but maybe at least an inch or two of ash everywhere. And it was covering, it covered the cars. I'm, I might have, pro I was still skating around. I might have walked up this street right here and there were clouds. I mean, it was, it was, it wasn't even a cloud. It was like, it was still completely smoking like majorly. And, uh, and there, it was snowing basically. It was like snowing ash or whatever down. And then also there were, um, charred papers like eight by ten and a half or whatever uh, office papers that had been charred that were floating down and there were many many of them so that kind of contributed to like the snow effect and um, I had to take my shirt off and tie it around my nose so that I could breathe properly but I skated around in the ash <laughs> I'm not sure exactly how I feel about it. I do feel emotional, but I also feel just uh, sort of solemn about it. It, it just has this, this, this weightiness, this gravitas to it. I'll never forget it.